This episode of Brains on Games is about going back to school at Hogwarts. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and this episode we are going to talk about a Harry Potter themed game because this weekend the cast of the Harry Potter movie, they're all going back to Hogwarts. So there's a big special on HBO and Crave if you're in Canada. So I thought it would, what better time to talk about a Harry Potter worker placement game. It's a game that was sent to me a while back from the folks at the op, a game called Harry Potter House Cup Competition. This is a game for between two and four players. Kids aged 11 and up can play it and it plays in about an hour and 15 minutes. Let's take a closer look at Harry Potter House Cup Competition. This is a game that's that's at the light to medium complexity level, probably more on the lighter side compared to lots of worker placement games. And like I said, it works with kids aged 11 and up. It's a game where you're collecting victory points. So that's how you win. If you're the player at the end of the seventh round who has the most victory points, you will win the House Cup competition. And you earn victory points by completing challenges by having your characters at their maximum level in terms of their knowledge of charms or, or potions or defense against the dark arts, you might get a few bonus points if you've saved some resources at the end of the game. Now, the, the first thing I think maybe before I open the box is just to demonstrate here, I'm gonna hold it up vertically so you can see uh, when you pack everything back in, the box stays flat. So. Uh, this is a game that definitely wins the will it close competition because it does close back up when you're done. Let me pop this box open and you can see what's inside. Once you open this box, you have, of course, the rule book on top. You've got this great big board. Uh, it's it's a, It folds out in four, so it is pretty large. These are the locations that your workers are going to visit at Hogwarts. You've got player mats and, of course, Gryffindor is represented. So the player mats, I mean, it's called the House Cup Competition. So the player boards, of course, represent different houses at Hogwarts uh, and they're dual layer. So you're going to put some sliders in here that will represent how your characters are developing in their knowledge of potions or charms or defense against the dark arts. Uh, underneath that, you've got some gems. You've got uh, rubies that will, it's its in, the gems are, are going to track your victory points and they're in the player color. So the Gryffindor gets these red rubies and the last time I played I was Slytherin so I was using these green gems to represent my victory points. We'll pull the other houses out here so that they're out of the road. Um, these little books represent knowledge that you're gaining through your years of Hogwarts and you've got some hats that represent the magical powers that you're developing. Here are the sliders for the player boards, and those are, are, like I said, representing the advancement in knowledge. You've got locations and cheat sheets. There's the lessons and the challenges here. Uh, potions, and this is where you're going to stand up your victory point tracker. I've put underneath there, here are the tokens representing the students at Hogwarts. There's Draco, and we've got Ron and Harry here. I don't know if you can really see them very well on the camera. These extra locations are great because you put these in spaces on the board and they randomize the game a little bit to increase the replayability. So there are certainly some extra locations here. You're not using each one in every single game. So you'll get to visit different places from the Harry Potter movies uh, and it'll be a different place in each game. These are the vials where your gems are going to go to store your victory points. So what's going to happen is they go in the stand like this and of course you'll take the corks out so you can add your gems and this is just a beautiful way to track who's winning the game the gems are going to pile up in the bottom and it's super easy at a glance to tell who's ahead and who and usually it was me is behind the leader now here's the board all set up you might not be able to see the whole thing on this little camera but if i can find a picture of a, of a board all laid out so that you can see the whole setup this is what it's going to look like by the end of the game. There are some larger circles at the bottom of the board where you're doing the round tracking. The game plays in seven rounds, and as the round tracker advances, you're revealing those extra locations that I mentioned earlier on. So here you've got platform nine and three quarters. That's gonna be visible at the very beginning of the game. And then these other ones at the bottom of the board are going to be revealed round by round 
and your player board is going to have these sliders on it. Like I said, that's going to track how much you've learned over the years. And this one fell out as I'm trying to, trying to move it. So you get the idea that as Harry is learning uh, some, some new charms or some new magic spells, his abilities are going to advance. These are the workers that you're going to be placing, these little round tokens. They've got pictures of the actors from the movie. That was one thing I had a little bit of trouble with. I knew the main characters, but I didn't know the names of all of the other ones, so I needed my son's help for those those uh, characters that, that weren't the main three. I didn't recognize all of their names, so I couldn't put them in the right spots. So your workers are improving through the game. It's a worker placement game, like I said at the beginning. So you, on your turn, you're going to be placing Harry or Hermione or Ron somewhere on the board, well, or the other characters from the movie, if, if you're not playing with the Gryffindor crew. Uh, they're going to go somewhere on the board in order to develop their skills or get those resources that they need to complete the challenges that earn them the victory points. The mechanisms here are, well, there's worker placement, there's that worker improvement. You need workers at certain levels to be able to complete some of the challenges. This board makes this game super thematic and relatable. It's very easy to figure out that, well, as you're completing these lessons, it's like your homework. You're developing some skill or earning some new ability. When you visit the professor's office, your magic powers will increase. If you go to the library, your knowledge increases and if you go to one of your classes you're going to develop your skills in one of the areas depending on which class you're taking but each player is placing a worker they can also on the same turn if they want to if they're able to complete one of their lessons and that could give them some additional resources or help to develop their skills and then once all the workers are placed you can start to do those challenges. And there's a bit of mental math when it comes to the challenges because you can do two easy ones or a hard one and an easy one. But your skills of your students have to add up to the level to, to pass the challenge. So here you need to have and you can a combination of students can do the challenge, but you've only got three workers that you can place on it. So you need to have your potion skill at level four, your charms at level three, and your defense against the dark arts has to be at level three as well. And if you've got all of that through some combination of your students, you can earn two knowledge and 40 victory points. So four gems are going to go in your vial but you're trying to maximize your turns because there are only seven rounds in the game. So you want to be able to do two challenges in a round, but that's tough when you've only got three workers. You may have to have one who's really strong to be able to get through one of those challenges all by himself. And then the other two can work on a second one. So you're, you're really balancing. How are you improving each of your three workers to make sure that they can do the challenge? Both my son and I sort of concentrated more on the main. He concentrated on Harry and I had Draco Malfoy, who I was trying to level up as much as I could. But then one of my other students wasn't strong enough to really be helpful with very many of those challenges. So he, my son was more efficient than I was in my turns. And, and he wound up having a larger pile of gems in his vial at the end of the game. You're planning ahead, you're budgeting those resources, you're trying to ensure that you've got the skills that you need to, to complete two challenges in a round, and that requires some mental math to make sure you're dividing up those skills properly so that you've got enough students to, with enough skill to do it. And if you're planning and budgeting, if you're using that whiteboard in your mind to make sure that you've got those mental math calculations correct and you're able to do all the things that you want to do, those are all good examples of executive functioning skills, the abilities and behaviors that you need to work towards a future goal. So many of these worker placement games are all about working towards that future goal and planning ahead to tackle that in an organized way. Uh, and I like the idea of trying to make your turns as efficient as possible to maximize the benefit of each move that you take in your turn. Final thoughts about Harry Potter's house cup competition first i have to thank the op for sending this game it's perfect timing the 20th anniversary of the harry potter movie and there's a special coming out on the weekend all about these guys 
Uh, this is a, a game that is so thematic. If you're a fan of the movies or the books, you're going to recognize the locations. Everything ties in there. But also, if, you're, if you've ever been a student, uh, you're going to recognize that going to the library to study will increase your knowledge and visiting the professor is going to increase your standing somehow. Going to classes is going to improve your skills in those areas. Doing your homework is going to give you some advantage. And of course, if you read the books or watch the movies, there's always some challenges that the, the characters have to overcome. It all makes sense and it all ties in. And you've got this great board that makes everything really clear and the dual layer player boards as well are fantastic. I do like worker placement games. Very often there's not a whole lot of player interaction. There's no take that in this game. And I don't love that take that that take that element that mechanism in in some of those games you know when i'm playing with my kids i don't want to sabotage their plans too much now they're older and it's a little bit more fun to do those things but certainly when they were young not so much i think this is a great introduction to worker placement games and because of the harry potter theme it might pull in some non-gamers it's simple enough that non-gamers can understand with a little bit of tutoring. It's not too hard to figure out. Like I said, it works with kids aged 11 and up. There's not a lot of reading. The symbols are pretty clear and you've got those cheat sheets, which I pulled out at the beginning, that show you what all the symbols mean. We did in our first game have to refer back to this a few times at the beginning, but it didn't take long for us to figure out what everything was and what everything meant. So there's not too much reading to do it's a, a good, simple worker placement game with solid components. And uh, I, like I said, I think that the kids are going to love the theme. You might have kids fighting over who gets to be Gryffindor because that's where that's Harry Potter's school, uh, Harry Potter's house in the, in the movie. So they might not all want to be the villain like I did. You've also got the very best victory point tracker, I think, in just about any game. You can tell very easily at a glance who's in the lead here. And in this case, of course, Gryffindor always seems to have an advantage in the movies and in the books. Uh, it's a solid frame that you're standing up these vials in. And uh, the box leaves enough room for you to store it without taking it all apart and having to store it flat. So there's room to keep this thing together. It's solid and sturdy. And I, I think this is a great way of keeping track of who's in the lead in a game. It's probably my favorite victory point tracker out of any game that I can think of off the top of my head. So I really do love this part of the game. And we are talking about a solid, simple, straightforward worker placement with that ability to level up your workers, which I also like. Not every single worker placement game allows you to improve the skills of your workers. And it's kind of fun to be able to do that to give them access to different parts of the board or different challenges. And that, in a nutshell, is Harry Potter's House Cup competition. Thanks again to the op for sending this game my way. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them in the comments section below the video, or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go, and the previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the Twitter handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully I'll see you next time.